distinguished guests and dear friends. I would like to send you my very best greetings. I would have loved to participate in person in your important event. Although unable to join you on this auspicious occasion, I am very pleased to contribute to your strategic discussions with this message. Allow me to start by conveying my warm congratulations for the work child helplines are conducting around the world. As partners of my mandate, as Special Representative of the Secretary General on Violence Against Children, it has been a pleasure to collaborate closely with you in raising awareness about the high incidence of violence on children, in providing a platform for children's voices and concerns to be heard and duly taken into account, and very especially in making clear to children that we refuse to conceal their suffering and trauma and remain ever more determined to make their right to freedom from violence effectively respected everywhere and at all times. Warm congratulations also for the special attention you are giving this year to the empowerment of children through technology and for the awareness raising campaign you are launching, Free Our Voices. These are significant initiatives I wholeheartedly welcome. This year's meeting gains a special meaning as it takes place on the occasion of the 25th anniversary of the Convention on the Rights of the Child. As you know, the Convention bridged different legal systems, cultural contexts and political agendas. It raised children above politics and mobilized nations in all regions behind a common endeavor, the realization of the human rights of all children, boys and girls of all ages, wherever they may live. The Convention marked a turning point in the way children are envisaged, not simply as accidental topic of discussion, passive beneficiaries of services or not yet persons, but as full-fledged citizens and agents of change. With this shift, the Convention set in motion a veritable revolution. But alongside with it, a technical revolution was also gaining ground. The very same year the Convention was adopted by the United Nations, we witnessed the birth of the World Wide Web. And since then, information and communication technologies have evolved at a phenomenal speed, bridging physical distance, opening new ways of communicating, learning, delivering services, and doing business. Today, almost 40% of the world's population are online, and by the end of this year, Internet users may reach 3 billion. Although drafted at a time when such rapid technological advances could be hardly anticipated, the ethos of the Convention remains as relevant as ever. Both online and offline states are required to pursue solutions that are guided by the principles of the Convention on the Rights of the Child, including children's protection from discrimination, the best interests of the child, and the respect for children's growing autonomy and agency. In today's world, more and more children use information and communication technologies, and they start at an increasingly younger age. ICTs offer children new and exciting means of enhancing knowledge and skills, developing research, experiencing cultural activities, and engaging in creative processes, in socialization, in entertainment and play. ICTs open avenues for children to learn about their human rights and about ways of promoting and securing their protection. More and more frequently, these are the means children choose to seek advice from child helplines, to report incidents of violence, and to ask for help and assistance. Violence and abuse are the main reasons why children contact a child helpline. This is testimony to the trust children place in helplines, but they also are the first point of contact for children at risk and they play a crucial role in the referral of children to relevant services and institutions. But in addition, they help children anonymously seek help and benefit from advice and support from well-trained personnel while opening avenues for a process of healing, recovery and reintegration. Moreover, through their daily contacts with children in more than 140 countries, child helplines generate valuable information about manifestations of violence and risk factors aggravating their occurrence. As we know, along with their potential, these technologies are, however, also associated with risks. Children can be exposed to violent or harmful information, groomed by sexual predators, subject to abuse and exploitation through the production and distribution of child abuse images or live web streaming. 
In cases such as cyberbullying, children's own conduct may harm others and represent the risks to themselves. The way children engage with ICTs is not the same across regions. There is, in fact, a significant digital divide between and within countries. For the most marginalized who may not have access to internet at home or in school, who may lack advice and guidance for caregivers, and who may explore the cyber universe on their own, the opportunity to become an empowered digital citizen will be limited. And these children may also be more likely to encounter cyber violence and harassment, exacerbating patterns of disadvantage. At the same time, technological advances have been so rapid that parents, caregivers and teachers often struggle to keep up with developments. As a result, a generational divide has become apparent, especially in poorer urban areas and rural neighborhoods in low- and middle-income countries. This explains why accelerating progress in children's online safety and protection from violence is a priority for my mandate. The results of my research and consultation with experts, including Child Helpline International, are captured in a study that I have just launched in New York with the title Releasing Children's Potential and Minimizing Risks, the Internet, ICTs and Violence Against Children. This is the topic I have highlighted in this year's report to the United Nations General Assembly, and it provides a sound reference for our important partnership with you. Dear friends, the way in which children embrace technology represents both a challenge and an opportunity for child helplines. Thanks to ICTs, it is possible to further consolidate and develop the bridge between children and the crucial information, advice and support and assistance that child helplines can provide to them. Understanding and addressing risks and opportunities and anticipating and monitoring developments in this area may be challenging, but it equally remains crucial to help child helplines' strategic role in the protection of children's rights and in the development of a safe, inclusive and empowering digital agenda for children. I'm convinced that the results of your timely consultation on children's empowerment through technology will be a precious contribution to the prevention and elimination of violence against children, both online and offline. Dear friends, the world has changed dramatically and will no doubt keep changing, sometimes too quickly. But we cannot content ourselves with trying to catch up to match its pace. Joining hands with you, we can consolidate progress in the use of technology to release children's potential and enhance their skills to explore the online world with confidence and in safety. We will enhance the safeguard of children's rights to freedom from violence, and we will be able to effectively reduce and prevent any online risks that may compromise the realization of children's rights. I look forward to continue to collaborate closely with you in the steps ahead. And I thank you very much for your attention.